hello guys welcome you to another one uh, in this video uh, many men of god has predicted concerning 2024 but we want to listen to that of prophet lovey Elias, uh, a vision that he saw he said he saw the vision and he was scared and he was praying that the vision should not be true he said there will be hard time in 2024 there will be famine uh, economical economic hardship the dollar will fall so let's go straight this is a part of a, a full sermon about 2024 so let's go straight and listen to the prophecy so concerning economical hardship so in march april may the world suffering economically it was drastic in my vision i hope i'm wrong it was a drastic shift I saw the dollar losing more, but I don't know how it was that money in the whole world was affected. Some weird things are about to transpire. I'm begging you. I'm hoping I am wrong. I really am hoping that I'm wrong. My prayer is that it won't happen. Uh, please, viewers, uh, prophecy is not to instill fears in the people, but it's rather to communicate to you the mind of God, what, what God uh revealed to his prophet and most of the time people must know that uh god reveals to redeem though this this vision he saw was very 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 important but i believe that when you pay attention to this video to the end uh it will help you it will guide you to navigate throughout that period and the body of christ the people of god will be successful so let's go on and listen to what he said towards the end of this video the response to the spirit of famine is always a seed. Because a seed is the only thing that contradicts and fights the spirit of famine. A seed is a carrier of life. In the time of famine, Abraham escaped never sold anything his son comes is directed by god there is still a famine but he sows in that land and he reaps a hundredfold notice i thought about this in prophetic service i said this i said some sow and they get 40 some sow and get 60 and some sow and get a hundredfold and all this is done on good ground and the good seeds fell on the good ground and some produced 40 and some 60 and some 100 fold. So producing 40 does not mean you're in the wrong place. It just means you have not done it the way God would want you to. 60, you have done better. You have gone beyond half. 40 sustains you. 60 makes you to start to enjoy life beyond the half line. It makes you enjoy life beyond survival. A hundredfold you have made it. There is comfort and peace in the four walls of your house. So Isaac does this at a time that was difficult. And God gave him a hundredfold. What produces a hundredfold is not giving when it is convenient. Anyone who gives out of convenience can never reap a hundredfold. A hundredfold is always received when the odds are against you and you can face God and sacrifice the best. It is at that moment, it is at that hour that famine stops in your life. When famine came upon the whole earth, the 12 tribes of Israel, the brothers of Joseph, were doing fairly well in life. But they had never sowed any seeds. They used to eat what comes in, they eat what comes in, they eat what comes in. But when Joseph was in the promised land and received divine revelation through the dream of Pharaoh. Joseph used wisdom to solve the issue that was at hand. God said there will be seven years of plenty. 
and there will be seven years of famine. Every one of you that is going through a famine, you were warned seven years before. But when the blessing was coming in, you never took time to calculate that after every seven years, there is always a famine that happens. There is a spiritual pattern every seven years. What does the Bible say about death? After how many years you should forgive him? You forgive every death? Seven. So for seven years you'll be in debt. And then it will be forgiven. And then you have plenty. And then you'll be in debt again. And I'm not talking about physical debt. I'm talking about spiritual things. Here. What I'm talking about is not saving. Even though saving is very wise. Joseph made the whole country tithe to the king. And he told the king, make storehouses that after seven years, when the drought kicks in, when the famine kicks in, the same people will come and buy grain from you. Notice now, this is very strange. How are people buying grain? How are they going to plant? I don't think you're catching the revelation here. Here's the secret that many of you have never been told. And this is because you have not been taught spiritual principles. I'm glad that people in our church, they understand spiritual principles. You see, Satan has deceived you so much. Unfortunately, not all of us, but many of us, many of us have, because we have not been taught the power of seeding. When you give your tithe, tithe sustains you. It does not increase you. It maintains your level. Hear me. I'm telling you this because I do it. I can't tell you what I don't do. Tithe maintains where you are. That through every season you go through, you will maintain your level. But if your level was also a small level, the small may not be able to sustain you through a famine. But you will still see it. Because you can never harvest what you did not sow. The principle of finances in the kingdom of God is never by prayer. You provoke money by money. You cannot provoke it by prayer. The prayer must be a prayer of a seed, not a prayer of words. When the sons of Adam and Eve, we see the first worship ceremony was a tithe unto God. Nobody had taught them about this, but they knew what to do. They presented something before God, but there is a reason why they presented it before God. They were trying to gain access into where their father and mother came from. They wanted to enter in the same graces, but the younger one did well. The older one did not do well. All giving is not made equal. There are people who give spiritually, and there are people who give carnally. Scripture recounts the story of Isaac who sowed in the land during a famine and reaped a hundredfold. As we approach the upcoming year, there is no need to fear. Consider it an opportunity to align with the universal laws of the Spirit and prepare for prosperity. It's essential to recognize that your circumstances are not determined by the world's happenings. The biblical notion that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous doesn't imply that being a Christian guarantees wealth. Instead, Righteousness is about being in right standing. Those who align correctly with the principles discussed here will benefit from the causes they set in motion. It's crucial to understand that sowing is a spirit-led endeavor. Allow the spirit to guide you in overcoming financial challenges and witness positive transformations even in unexpected times. This wisdom is not exclusive to religious circles. Even millionaires and billionaires apply it thriving during economic downturns. Trust in the process 
and may you experience blessings beyond your expectations. God bless. This is serious. I believe the body of Christ needs, needs to pray because what Prophet Love saw in 2024 is so serious and so dangerous uh, because other men of God also prophesy almost similar thing. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, to share, uh, to bless all people so that Christians will be aware of what is about to happen in 2024. God bless you.